The biggest barrier for going with a dedicated processor and separate amplifiers is usually the cost. So in this video, we're going to take a look at a budget 16 channel processor from Tone Winner called the AT300. I will be upfront and say that things did not quite go the way I expected. So make sure you stick around to the end to hear my verdict, as well as who I think this processor is aimed at. I'd like to thank Fundamental Audio for sending this in for review. And please note that this isn't a sponsored video and Fun Audio will not be seeing this video prior to release, so all the thoughts and opinions expressed are mine alone. There is quite a bit to unpack in this video, so let's get into it. So while you watch me unbox the Tone Winner AT300, let's go over a few of the specs and other important information. The AT300 is a 16 channel AV processor designed for use with Dolby Atmos and DTSX enabled home theater systems, as well as upmixing for Neural X and Dolby Surround. It features HDMI 2.0 input and output with support for HDR and Dolby Vision with 4K 60Hz. It has RCA preouts as well as 14 channels of balanced XLR outputs, with each output having a designated speaker location with a single subwoofer on XLR. There are two more preouts for subwoofer 2 and 3. The AT300 can be configured to run a maximum channel configuration of 7.3.6 or 9.3.4 depending on your needs. I'll leave a link down below to a detailed specification list so you can see the hardware. But one of the things that I found out which you will see later in the video is that there is support for manual PEQ adjustment so you can use something like REW to measure the frequency response of your room for each speaker and manually add the adjustments. This was something that I was not in a position to do due to the time constraints to both make the video as well as the learning curve required so I will say that after speaking to the distributor this processor really is aimed at for either a professional installation and calibration or a DIY enthusiast that wants to get the most out of the processor and get into the separates game on a budget. It retails for around 1600 US dollars or 2000 Australian dollars so it sits squarely at the affordable end of the market. More on that later in the video. So taking a look at the unit itself, the build quality is decent, no frills, with a steel lid and a plastic front with a small LCD panel. There isn't anything super fancy with this unit, it's quite light but it is sturdy and has all of the inputs and outputs that you would need for a home theatre system. So installation was pretty easy, however I have a Trinob Altitude 16 processor in my setup and I was not up for dismantling that for this video. So I used XLR cables with RCA converters and then I switched the amps over to RCA inputs so that I keep the Altitude 16's configuration intact. As I have everything labelled, it didn't take too long for me to have everything connected and powered on. The first thing that you want to do is to set up the speaker configuration. So if we go to speaker setup and speaker layout, we can change it to what is more appropriate for my setup, which is 7.1.6. So we'll go into that, we will hit yes. So I have connected up the calibration microphone and what we'll do is we'll run a test. And once the test is done, then I will watch some movies and I'll give you my feedback. So we're on the calibration. It's in another room. I'm actually sitting in my study. I have a HDMI splitter so I can record and record the audio and not impact. You might hear it because it's quite loud, um, but it won't impact me sitting out here. So it's saying it couldn't find left back and right back, so I'll need to just troubleshoot and see exactly what's going on there. So let's run through the menu system. Um, my first impressions are that it looks like it's from 1975. <laughs> the font is a serif font, so it looks kind of goofy. The information is there, but it's not really presented in a very nice way. Again, this is a budget processor, so obviously they have not spent the money on any kind of GUI design or hired anybody outside of the technical team <laughs> to just design this. I'm not gonna judge it just yet because I haven't heard anything yet coming out of it, so it could be very good. So we'll go through, there's different modes. Obviously you can choose between pure, direct, stereo, multi-channel, Dolby Upmix, DTS, Neural X. Those appear to be the only two multi-channel formats that it supports. 
We'll go across to the parameters. You can adjust the trim levels on the speakers. You can see here, I've just run a calibration and it's made some adjustments to the various speaker outputs. Some of them are kind of weird. Like the right surround trim has pushed it to 10. That, that can't be right. Same with the rear surround, it's pushed it to 10. Now there is an advanced mode and apparently you can upload your own PEQs. So if you use REW and push some noise through it, you can get frequent with C response and then you can level it out in REW and create your own PEQ filters and then you can upload them. I am not going to do that for the purposes of this video. This is just really an overview of the processor and just some initial thoughts. If I was to keep this or I was going to use it in my dedicated room uh, full time, obviously this is being returned. So I would probably put a lot more time into trying to get it sounding perfect. We'll go through the setup menu you can change the source, you can change the audio mode, speaker setup, which you can go through and adjust various things like go into crossover and you can change it. But you can do a manual EQ as well. And I think this is the way you can actually go in and you can make changes, see the different bands that relates to the PEQ filters. So left and right center channel surround top channels and the subwoofer channel. Okay, so under options, these are just the options for the processor itself for on-screen display and just various other options. It's got a 12 volt trigger, so you can also adjust that and you can change it from metric to imperial, it looks like. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's very no frills in terms of the interface. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reserve my judgment for actually going and listening to it. I'm not gonna record any of the demos because there's literally no point in me recording multi-channel audio, you know, through a stereo microphone and then expecting you to be able to hear it. So what I'll do is I'll do some demos and then I will give you my feedback. The first thing that I did was to get the tone winner up and running, try a demo without any kind of calibration. The first thing that I noticed was the game was a little down, which is pretty standard I found so after pumping up the volume, I listened to a scene from the Batman with the Batmobile starting up as that is my go-to scene for testing out positional sound, high frequencies, as well as the LFE and chest slams. It was actually not that bad, considering that there was no calibration or timing setup. However, I noticed that right away the higher frequencies felt a little flat and a little muddy. Of course, understanding that no calibration had been done yet. The bass was also a little less impactful but a lot of work has been done to my room to make the subs play nice together, pretty much like any room, but with my room, some big suckouts needed to be fixed and time aligned and filters needed to be added to make it really punchy. So overall, it felt that there was some promise to it and overall pretty decent. This is where things took a turn and I was actually a little surprised. After I ran the calibration, you know, the one that you saw me running through the menu walkthrough, everything seemed to get out of whack. The mids and the high frequencies became blurred together and it just did not sound good at all. I ended up running several calibrations to try and get it sounding better, placing the microphone in a few different places to see if that helped, but I just couldn't get it sounding very good. After speaking with the distributor, it became clear to me that this AT300 is really aimed at having a manual calibration and they actually really only recommend it to people who are prepared to put the time into learning something like REW and pushing the frequency responses through each speaker and then measuring the response and modeling the curve manually inputting those filters into each speaker this was just something that i didn't have the time to learn my understanding of rew is very slanted towards subwoofers so the learning curve required for me to understand the desired frequency responses for each speaker what the ranges were and then figuring out the adjustments was not realistic for me to invest the time into for this video. This is something that does interest me, so hopefully I will be able to put the time into this for the future, but for the scope of this video, I just wasn't able to do it. I will temper this by saying that I have actually listened to the AT300 with MX10 speakers at the StereoNet Hi-Fi show back in June, and it was properly calibrated by the team at Selby, and my memory of it was that it sounded excellent. So the reality is, I think an auto calibration option is not that good, and that a manual calibration is needed and does mean that you will need to spend the time to learn the desired frequency response for each speaker and then simulating the desired response and assigning the filters that the processor can use. So who do I think that this processor is for and can I recommend it? Sadly, I don't think that I can recommend this processor to just anyone. 
This is not a plug and play device and it lends itself to someone who is willing to put in the time to learn how to calibrate it and with something like REW or someone who is willing to pay a professional to come and calibrate it for them. This is for someone who wants to get into the separates and amplifiers game on a budget. So you could spend some more money on your amplifiers and buy the AT300 to get going on the journey and not break the bank. I can't recommend this for just anyone who wants to plug and pray. I think it will not give you the experience that you may be hoping for. But again, this isn't to say that it's not a good processor. It's just not aimed at that kind of person. Someone who wants to put the time and effort in will likely be rewarded. As I said, I have heard this in private demos when I was filming for the StereoNet Hi-Fi show. I'd like to thank Fundamental Audio for sending this in for review. And if you found the video helpful, make sure you please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to see my future videos. Thank you for watching, but that's it for this one. You'll catch me in the next one. Bye for now.